Hello and welcome to The Passion Show. My name is Phil and joining me as always is my co-host Kyle. Hello. And this week we're joined by Zach. Hello. So in today's episode we're talking about screenwriting. So Zach, he's been screenwriting for a good few years. He also studies filmmaking. I think we'll start by like how you first became like aware of screenwriting. Like, is it always a thing you've been interested in, like telling stories and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, I guess I've um, I've always been interested in the process of writing, and even since when I was a really little kid, I was always trying to like write stuff. And I, I pro I probably tried to write a film maybe a couple of times like mm-hmm. as a kid, but um, in terms of the actual process of screenwriting in a more recognisable form of what it is, I suppose probably that's only come about in the last couple of years, maybe. Um, sort of going alongside of the university, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Just as my interest in film like develops, because I, I, I used to, I used to try and be a bit more of an actor and stuff like that. So I was used to like reading plays and stuff like that, and I'd try to rent a couple of my own. But yeah, I think the interest in screenwriting specifically, I'd, I'd say over maybe the last three or four years. I think. Um... It's quite interesting the way you're into like acting and stuff like that because a lot of people when they're interacting like they're <laughs> interacting, a lot of people when they when when they're into um acting they kind of like write their own scripts to put themselves out there, don't they? To like do their own work because it's quite hard to like pick up work. So is that sort of like an avenue for you? Yeah, I think I think a lot of actors are um told that one of the best ways to get work is to make their own opportunities from mm-hmm. an early stage. But I, I think. The actor and the screenwriter aren't really that different in in what they do. That it both of them at the core is, is telling a story and creating characters. But whereas a, an actor creates a character to perform a story, the writer writes it down for for somebody else to do mm. to to tell that as a full story. Um, but it still comes from like a, a very sort of human innate want to to uh, create a story and tell a story. So are there any movies that um, like have inspired your love for screenwriting? Or any like screenwriters yeah, or anything? Yeah, screenwriters. Um, well, I, I mean, there's all, the, there's all the big obvious ones that anybody that's first getting into film in general is going gonna, is gonna, to, um, you know, discover and really get into sort of uh, Tarantino or the Coen brothers or anything yeah. like that, but... I think for me, my sport more specific influences mm-hmm. was probably, um, probably a bit some like slightly more like indie stuff. Like not wanting to like, you know, take him a, a really hipster route about it or anything. <laughs> it's more that just when, you know, when you watch something, you know, like a Spielberg film or something that's really well written, it's like you can almost see how it works. Like you can see why this works. Like yeah, this is you know well big well-written film but i was really interested in stuff that maybe hadn't been as seen as much and it's trying to figure out well how have they made this work like this doesn't seem to quite follow sort of the rules and formula that i'm used to so how how has the screenwriter made this story work and like not be boring like a lot of david lynch stuff you'd think on paper should be really boring i mean maybe to be fair a lot a lot of people do find that kind of art film a bit a bit tedious but He's I definitely got. He's, mad. he's definitely got his. He's definitely got his fans though. Yeah. And there's something about his work as a writer and a director that's that's connected with people, and that's the kind of thing I find interesting. Yeah, I suppose um, indie film sort of inspires a lot of creativity, and that's potentially why you're more drawn to the writing of those films. Like, I know doing like a film and media course, David Lynch is brought up all the time, isn't he? Like, yeah, yeah. And you're always like studying his work and stuff like that because he is quite sort of he's very indie and niche, yeah. but he's quite influential in his in his work, isn't he? Yeah, I'd I'd say David Lynch is probably I'd say he's probably one of, if not the most well known and successful art film director. That yeah. he's probably he's probably the biggest name outside of the mainstream in terms of filmmaking. Obviously, yeah, that's definitely. kind of a hard thing to quantify, but um, yeah, he you know he's probably one of the the lucky few in a sense. I mean, when I call him lucky, that's not to discredit, you know, his hard work and talent, but he's probably one of the lucky few that his work has got out there. And he's and, not sold out. Yeah, and, and people have just found found that thing that they connect with that's allowed him to be able to just keep making the stuff he wants to make that people really uh, identify with and enjoy. It's quite interesting because um, it sounds like we're sort of giving him credit for being a well-known writer and director, despite doing such indie indie projects. 
But what do you think of the idea of um, screenwriters and even like directors and stuff not getting maybe as much recognition as they possibly could do for the work they put in? Um, well, I, I think I think there's a a general just hierarchy mm. in in the jobs of what the general public is going to know. Like the general public care the most about actors because mm-hmm. they're just the names that they recognise, and then you know there's directors that do have a have a name for themselves within a more a general movie watching audience. It's maybe. like Tarantino, like we mentioned before. Like everyone knows when a Tarantino film's coming out. He, yeah. he's kind of like David Lynch in that aspect, isn't he? He sort of bridges that gap between yeah. mainstream and yeah, yeah. Because he, he, you know, obviously he started in independent filmmaking. Reservoir Dogs is one of the highest grossing independent films I love ever that made. Film so much. Um, but obviously now he, you know, he's been working with Miramax and then the Weinstein Company yeah. for the for his last few films. So you couldn't exactly call him an independent filmmaker but he you know that's what he has his roots in and it's still um they're still much smaller companies than like any of the you know the top it's not sony or something like that yeah so for for people who are trying to sort of access filmmaking like what sort of route did you go down to sort of get into it like to learn more about it are there any like books or anything that you were sort of interested in yeah so uh like if i you know if i was going to sit somebody down and try and tell them you know this is how you're going to be a, a screenwriter there's uh, the probably the most famous screwriting books is screenplay by Sid Field, which is the one that started. Oh, I've read that one. I've used that, that. that. That's <laughs> what that's what started it all. Like obviously, people you know used free act structure and had an understanding yeah. of free act structure, what it is. But uh, I think he wrote screenplay in seventy nine, and that it was the first screenwriting how to book, and it, it did just start that entire, basically a whole industry of how to write screenplay books. Yeah. Uh, so that you know that that's the first one I, I'd recommend reading, and then there's there's Save the Cat by Blake Snyder, which is uh, probably like screenplay taken to its most extreme um, conclusion. Of you know you, you know Sid Field says you need three acts and like two plot points and a midpoint. Um, Blake Snyder would say you know he breaks it down to like sight and incident happens on page twelve. Um, the Act One break is on page twenty five, midpoint page fifty five, Dark Knight of the Soul page seventy five. Like all of these, like you know, you you can get the the Blake Snyder beat sheet, which de- yeah. breaks it down, you know, to the page. Which you know, when I read it, I found it really interesting, and it it really it di- it did get me quite inspired and um, gave me a big start. But now knowing a bit more it's probably not something i would refer to too much um and then there's anatomy of story by john truby is one that i'd recommend screenwriters reading on quite early because it um it moves away from over relying on the uh free act structure and those ideas of free act structure and it concentrates a lot more on sort of themes and character webs in mm. terms of like um specific genres um I think it's a rather simplistic book, but like it's about comedy. It's it's called writing comedy. It's really basic. It's by um Jenny Roche, right? And it's yeah, it's that's a very good starting point, I reckon. Yeah, I, th- I think you you can't really go wrong with reading anything, yeah. even even if it's just shit made by a nobody. Like exactly. if if you can analyze that and see that there's really nothing in there worth having, then it, it's still just another notch under the belt. It's something you've learned, like the um. I can't remember the exact study I'm quoting here, but like the average expert in their field reads something like about 50 books about their field every year. So, you know, if you really want to be the top and be the best, like you, you, you've you never, yeah, you never lose out from just reading what other people had to say about it. It sounds like a lot of what these books are trying to get across is kind of like the fundamentals of um, writing and the sort of formulaic ways of doing it. And that's sort of, um sets up your background knowledge doesn't it but i think the goal of screenwriting should be to be creative shouldn't it and to do your own thing so but that being said being formulaic in itself could be a positive thing because like it's following yeah like, what's came before and what has been successful before yeah um i guess the, there's a balance to strike between learning from like conventional wisdom and um doing your own thing and it, it's quite a, def- a difficult balance to find you know I've, Obviously, I'm not, you know, I'm not an expert or a professional. It's still something that I'm trying to do for myself. That sometimes, like, it's like I'll have an idea that I think is a really good idea, and I want to use it. But I know conventional wisdom would probably say it's not the best way to go about writing something. So then it's like, well, you know, what, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to say, well, you know, 
if most screenwriting manuals and and people that have succeeded think you should do it this way cuz cuz mo- like a lot a lot of your like young you know screenwriters and filmmakers will come into come into it um and they'll just want to disregard all the rules and yeah. they just want to throw that away and that's fine like I, re- I respect wanting to like pioneer and do your own thing but you know for every for every thousand mavericks that just go oh no 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 like that's not how it's done i'm gonna make my own film like one of them is quentin tarantino and the other yeah. 999 are just a bunch of you know young film students that it's, don't know what they're talking about really it kind of happened to me because like i had an idea for this sitcom the original idea was like it would be an anthology series so like there'd be like different car- like it would be set in like one workplace yeah okay and there'd be a different person on shift each episode and okay so different character dynamics but I got told it's probably best off to have main characters that people can love, like the can grow, like throughout the series rather than yeah. So then that that the choice would come down to you there that how much you wanna follow yeah. sort of conventional wisdom and how strongly you feel in your own idea that you think you can make it work. You know, something like Skins has yeah, the same. Um, cast in every episode, but each episode follows a different character. Always something in Philadelphia is brilliant for that. So um, they have like random episodes where they just do any structure that they want. Like it's oh, it's brilliant. I love it. <laughs> it does sound like the sort of knowing your background and your theory behind it is important. Like without knowing about stuff like three act structures and the hero's journey, um, you wouldn't be able to subvert it if you didn't know about it. Like something like Star Wars. I think you mentioned about George Lucas before we started recording. So George Lucas wrote, um, the, I think I think he wrote the first draft of Star Wars before he he had read the Hero's Journey. But then once he did, he kind of saw like the parallels of where his story was lining up with it, and then he purposely chose to adapt his story to to follow it more like beat for beat. Which is now why, when explaining things like the Hero's Journey, Star Wars is one of the examples people usually use. It's one of the most archetypal examples people use. I think generally, if you're ever reading a description about the hero's journey, it's usually Star Wars, Lord Harry of the Rings, Potter. The Matrix, and Harry Potter yeah. as the um, most simple. I mean, obviously, they're stories that everybody knows as well, so yeah, exactly. it's, a, it's a good example to use, but they're ones that... And you can see the similarities between all the four that you listed. Yeah, yeah. So George Lucas, even if he was doing it, he wasn't aware of that he was mimicking this hero's journey. But he was probably doing it subconsciously because of the stories he's grown up with, because it all comes with like fairy tales and folk tales yeah. and stuff like that. Um, because I, I mean, I, I, I think that storytelling is probably one of the most innately human things that we do, and mm. we're we're constantly telling stories. It's how we relate to each other and understand each other and the world around us. So the there becomes a very you know it's something we've all been as a species we've all been working on together for a very long time. Yeah. So we're very used to the way that stories are told and we, we have a way that when it's familiar and we like it. So, you know, and and then some trailblazer might come along and write a story in a completely different way and show us all, oh, no, you can you can tell a story this way. And, and some people will embrace it because it's so different, but other people will be a bit more hesitant and kick back because it doesn't follow that structure that we want. Like I think it's similar with, with music. You know, if, if you've grown up and you just listen to sort of mainstream and pop music, it, you might struggle a little bit when the first time you hear a piece of music that isn't you know three minutes long verse chorus verse chorus you know the hook comes in in the first minute key change in the last right now there's usually like a bass drop on the uh, chorus and stuff like that isn't yeah and like the you know there's trends like that that people always want to hear at the time but there's there's the fundamentals that were really ingrained that that's how we like stories and that's how we like music because i mean the hero's journey Joseph Campbell wrote that when um, I think he was he was I want to get this right I think he was he was doing a lot of research into I think it was Aborigine ca- Aborigine cave dra- uh, drawings and and stories or something like that or it might be Native American I can't remember now and he noted he noticed the the similar themes and plot beats and things that happened in every single one That's and he so started to relate that to like greek tragedies and then yeah. more modern cinema and he, and he just noticed that all these stories that he was looking at they all tend to have a lot of really core Cause, like elements and like greek tragedies like the the very similar aren't they like shakespearean plays play out like greek tragedies yeah there's there's always the same 
bit in yeah. there that uh, we, we tend to use. I think the general point we're sort of hovering around is that it's hard to be creative because it's with innate. Our, yeah, with yeah. our stupid monkey brains. Like, I know... Yeah. Because I've never been, like, as into script writing, but I have I've wrote a couple of scripts for, like, college and university and stuff like that. And whenever I think of a, like, a story that I think is good, I'll sort of plan it in my head a bit. And I'll notice it becoming really formulaic. And I'm like, I'd want it to be subversive and interesting, but I kind of, I, I don't know how to do that. Like, but... Yeah, I mean, I suppose we're all looking <laughs> for the best way to yeah, do yeah, something yeah. that's really interesting and different, you know. Um... But again, you need to know those fundamentals to be able to subvert it. So it's quite a hard line yeah. to draw in between the two, isn't it? I, th- I suppose even within those formulas and those little things that we all use, there's still so much variation between that because you know a song by britney spears and a song by the arctic monkeys follow the same verse chorus pattern yeah. and will be somewhere between three minutes and three minutes and 20 seconds long mm. and you could line them up and they'd pretty much fit but they're still massively different and um still have you know different audience and different things that people like about those type of music and it's the same with film that just because uh, an adam sandler movie is, is written to follow the free act structure beat for beat uh something like die hard yeah. will also be written <laughs> to follow that structure but they'll be they'll turn out to be completely different films like there's still in the in the minute details different brains behind them yeah there's still always going to be things that make them individual and make them unique like you don't you don't have to disregard all the rules to do something that's different you just have to do one thing that's really mm. different maybe so if someone wants to take up screenwriting um mm. what process do you go through when you're writing a script I, i've written three feature length stri- scripts that are all in kind of a first draft stage so if i was going to sit down to start a new one I mean, it's something I'm still developing. You know, obviously, I'm not I'm not a professional or an expert or anything like that. And every time I've finished reading one of the big screenwriting manuals, I will kind of change my mind. So I'm just about to finish reading John Truby's Anatomy of Story. Um, so that will shape heavily the, how I, I go about starting my next screenplay. But I suppose you just want to get, you know, just any of your ideas down, like everything you've thought of that could be used. You, you just want to make sure you have that down, you have that on paper. My when I finished my second script, uh, it's called Gabriel and Madeline. Um, I was really struggling for a long time on one of the characters, what I wanted her to be trying to achieve. I, like I knew where how she was supposed to end up, like kind of the arc she was supposed to take, but I was really struggling for what she was supposed to be doing, beat to beat. So you know, I, I just wrote down her entire life in a word document basically and then you start to like see like you're just making it up on the spot just automatic writing and then oh and then her dad did this blah 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 but you you just suddenly start to think little things like oh okay that that that's you know i think i think i made up that she when she, she was in high school she had this like kind of like dodgy much older boyfriend and then i thought oh well that that would shape the person she grew into then wouldn't it and then before you know it, you, you suddenly start to really know these characters, and then when you put them in the situation, you see how they're going to react to that story. And before you know it, you've got everything coming out of you. I find it really interesting the way you talk about script writing because you, I can tell you're passionate about it, but you talk about it almost as if it's like work. Because if you are passionate about something, you do need to put like the hours in and put the effort in. And so, do you find when you want to write, you have to do sort of force yourself to a bit and really push yourself to to like get somewhere in the future yeah i think in the yeah in the end of the day you you've you've got to put the work in i think i think anybody can be creative and can be inspired um but the difference between somebody that thinks oh i've got a really good idea for a story and they write it down and and don't really touch it again Mm. the difference between that person and a professional is that a, a professional makes themselves right on the days where they're not inspired. Yeah. It, it's quite interesting that we haven't really touched on this subject before of, like, perseverance, considering how many episodes I've done. But if you are passionate about something and you want it to, like, be your career, you do need to put in the hours and really put in the time. And Yeah, there's a big difference between love and enjoyment. Yeah, the, there's, like, a fine line, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, because, like, if, if you... I think if you really love something, then you'll make yourself do it when you don't feel like doing it. Exactly. It's a good sort um, of um, benchmark of whether you do love something, because if you can push yourself like you do to write feature-length scripts just to improve your own knowledge, then, like, you know, it, it, even though it might not seem like it'll take you somewhere in the short term, it still improves your knowledge and it builds up your repertoire of, like, 
your, you know, of sort of like projects that you have that you can display? Yeah, because if you know, if you if you only want to do something when it's fun and it comes easily to you, then you know, obviously that's fair enough. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, like plenty of my mates like like playing football, and it's something you'll go do for the afternoon, and it, you know, and it's fun, and you know, obviously that's great, but. You're not going to play at Wembley None of them, are, yeah. None of them are going to be a professional just... footballer doing that. And obviously, that's not what they want, so that's fine. Yeah. But if you want to be a professional footballer, you can't uh, kick about every Saturday, yeah, uh, on an afternoon when the weather's nice. You know, you've got you you got to practice all the time. You know, you know, exactly. I I play guitar, and I've been playing a really long time. Like I started when I was very young, but I'm still not particularly good at it because I've I'm not trying to be. An amazing guitarist I'm not trying to be a professional musician so you know i'll pick it up when i when i feel like it and have a you know i have a bit of a mess around on it um, yeah so it's still like a hobby isn't it Where, yeah and you can see that line drawn between how much you love playing guitar compared to like script writing yeah like script writing i want to i want to be a screenwriter and i want to be the best screenwriter that i can be mm-hmm. you know and i, and I want to be able to live off that so to be that good at it you've got to practice every day and sometimes you have to make yourself do it when you when you just don't really feel like it because no you know no great screenwriter or filmmaker mm. ever created something just working on it when when they felt like it mm. um you know stephen king i think he i think he has a word count that he has to hit every single day i think i suppose not all us can be like stephen king but if you can like push to like your own levels and motivate yourself then that's how you do really push you yeah yeah sure because passionate about like i you know i couldn't sit down and write at my laptop for a full working day but but, but it's it, it, yeah it, it, a it's a skill it's, it's a skill you, you've got to, you've got to practice it you know what i mean like even if you're just starting on like 20 minutes of you know of just building that habit and if you're just writing complete shit it doesn't matter it's just trying to make it like a daily habit and then you know, you can bump it up and bump it up until, yeah, you know, like a professional, like like I was saying, Stephen King or somebody else, like writing is their job. So when you know, when you think of, you know, when you, if you if you have like a nine to five job, you if you're a teacher or something like that, you go to an office for a certain amount of hours and you do your job and then leave. And it's the exact same for a professional writer that they go to their, you know, to their desk uh, yeah. and they they write Writes every day for a yeah. certain amount of time. Mm. Yeah. So I think on that sort of motivating note to go out and do what you want like do you like put your time into your passion we'll sort of wrap it up there so yeah. thanks to kyle as always for being my co-host thank you phil thanks to zach for coming on teaching us about um screenwriting yeah uh i had a laugh yeah <laughs> great <laughs> and um if you have any passions yourself and that you want us to talk about feel free to uh, leave them in the comments because we'd love to talk about it or hit us up in the dms if you want to come on the show yourself yeah if you want to come on the show to talk about your passion then we'd be more than happy to have you on but um other than that we'll uh, see you next time have a good day bye